<laughs> As we gather together in this uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, evening, and the harvest season is underway. I don't know about you, my lungs have felt it the last few days, and uh, I often think I'm glad the Lord has called Brother Alex to be a farmer, and he has called me not. Uh, but for those that uh, you, you endure the allergen seasons, um, I blame all of the farmers, but uh, no, I don't. Uh, I appreciate the rain and a little bit this morning and yesterday, just about the time things settle down, a little more rain comes and it's good for us. God has given us a great week. I'm thankful next door as our kids are underway with uh, Patch the Pirate Clubs. They, uh, week number two now, learning into uh, the, the new uh, books and curriculum and things. And in a few weeks, they'll have a song prepared and some uh, lessons and things that they'll be in here once a month to uh, show us for a brief couple minutes, and we'll, we'll get to recognize our kids each week. We welcome back uh, Miss Joanne and Charles and Kay uh, from your world travels, and we're thankful to uh, see you back safely. Been praying for you. And then uh, keep uh, Ron and Deb in prayer. They left Sunday, was it Sunday after, right after church? And uh, again, back on their world uh, tour, and uh, they'll kind of come in and out and back and forth, and, and uh, pretty soon heading down to Florida uh, and their uh, end of the season adventure. So for those who have been traveling and those coming back and forth, we're thankful for safety and protection. I want to start tonight with a simple song and a chorus that you'll know well. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? I like this song. It's an easy one to uh, sing together as we consider, Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard. It's recorded in God's word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, Wonderful, try it again, isn't he wonderful, 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 isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful, eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's word, isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful, I like that, he is wonderful, and a lot of things we could say how wonderful he is. I uh, hope that we don't forget to praise him. We'll talk about that in just a moment, even in our, our study tonight and lesson. But it's important for God's people to sing praises to the Lord and to tell him how wonderful he is, both in song and in prayer and in testimony. And uh, can never speak enough the goodness of God. Well, tonight our... Uh, prayer requests <coughs> are, uh, I, I don't have the, the printed sheet, it's a little bit different uh, uh, format as far as the, the lesson tonight, but I do have <laughs> the prayer requests uh, updated on our, our uh, app and the, the prayer list there, some of you use that, and I'll run through them all uh, together uh, this evening and then we'll take any updates or new ones, but we do want to continue to pray for Mrs. Uh, Edna Gidney, of course, um, with her health and after the, the passing of uh, Bill this last week and just um, all the, the things in her life and praying that God would, would be with the family. Keep praying for Brittany and the appointment she's been having with her heart and uh, some improvements made, but still a lot of unknowns with the tests and the MRIs taken. We're praying for Dana and his health and then uh, continuing to pray for Helen's grandson, for Alex after uh, his surgery, it was a week ago Wednesday, had the one surgery, and that's an answer to prayer, and uh, back in the rehab there in Chicago, out of the hospital, and uh, isn't he wonderful? And Amen. 
praise the Lord. And uh, day by day, hey, that's a miracle uh, of so many, so many things that uh, can't be explained. God's taken care of. And now the, the prayer is through rehab. And, and I know the, the hope is to be home by Thanksgiving. And that's true. You know, we're told that's right. And uh, I don't know what the, the medical needs for that are, but uh, if that's the goal of the family, we want to pray toward that and that uh, you keep praying for Alex. And then we're praying for Cody, uh, still for Carolyn's uh, cousin there. And we've heard uh, the update of being able to be with the kids now and family and they're at home still recovering and uh, Okay, we pray for them, not just physically, but then with finances and, and the family and a lot of, a lot of decisions and wisdom needed there. Uh, keep praying for uh, Wayne and his surgery, was it, was it Monday? Yes. And he had the, the surgery for his circulation as he... Good. Good. Pray now for the recovery from the surgery and for that circulation to continue and good health moving forward. Pray for uh, John Krim. Today he started radiation and uh, chemotherapy and it'll be, uh, I think it's 26 days. I might have that number off, but 26 days in a row of radiation and then once a week with chemotherapy and uh, it'll... Um, no doubt uh, start taking a, a, an effect on the body as far as the fatigue and the drain. And, and some of you have gone through that. You've known family to go through it and uh, praying for his strength and his spirit. And I uh, told him on Sunday, he was here in church. I said, my prayer is that at the end of this, that a, uh, a big juicy steak will be uh, his truly uh, one, of the, one of the hardships has been not being able to swallow and not being able to eat right. He said he lost 40 pounds in a matter of uh, just a few weeks, and I told him if he would write a book about weight loss and how to do that, he might and uh, would tease a little bit, but the truth is uh, he needs prayer, and he'll be going through this physical endurance uh, for the next several weeks, and want to see him raise up and, and God's hand with him and encourage him as well. And then pray for uh, uh, Dwayne Egner. We've put him on our list. I got an update a couple days ago. He was downgraded after the biopsy from stage two, or excuse me, from stage three down to stage two. So still cancer, still things that they need to treat and do, but it's not as uh, advanced or severe as they had originally thought. And that alone is a big answer. And just praying for, for him uh, and the uh, physical uh, health. And then we, we put on our list a couple weeks ago, Daryl Rasmussen, um, and this is a friend of, of uh, Miss Valerie, my, my wife as well. It's her dad uh, up in Michigan, again, Daryl, and uh, he was given a, a grim prognosis of just, um, was it three to six months of, of, of life without treatment, maybe a couple extra with, and some decisions to be made, and uh, I think as of today, I uh, heard the news that uh, hospice has now come in, and, and uh, the quality of life is certainly diminishing, and there's a lot of uh, emotion in that and hardship. You can imagine watching your dad, what would be just uh, a few months ago, vibrant, strong, healthy, and, and, uh, and just in such a quick time take things um, whittling down. And, of course, if, if God... If anything's going to happen, it's going to be because of the Lord. And uh, just pray that, that God, uh, yes, intervene physically, but I think much about the, the spirit both in this man and his family, his wife, his kids, um, and, and all of all the family right now. Pray for the Rasmussen family. And then we've been praying for uh, Jimmy uh, dealing with brain cancer. And again, small um, blessings to know it's not been getting worse or spreading. And uh, still under treatment 
And then we're praying for Miss Jill and her legs and uh, just good strength. Going back to the, the doctor tomorrow. And uh, I saw that she's got the gym membership and the 400-pound squats going and the getting ready for the marathon. No, uh, but pray for those legs and, and good strength and that God would, would uh, uh, certainly uh, regain all the stamina and the things needed there. And then uh, several that we've been pray, excuse me, praying for for salvation, uh, Kevin Cox and Jerry, Linda and, and, and Rick, and uh, praying for uh, God to soften their hearts and for salvation. Um, then I'll give you another uh, prayer request. It's not on our list, but uh, kind of a blessing prayer request. I believe um, within the next couple of weeks, uh, maybe it's not this Monday, but the following Monday, uh, Brady Schrock is starting a new job um, here in LaPorte County, and uh, that's a blessing. The prayer request is he's looking for a place to move, and uh, he, he pulled into the parking lot briefly on his way back home. He, he came in Sunday and uh, was coming from some of the Army training and drills in, in South Bend and making his way back to Illinois and uh, stopped in for just a brief moment. He uh, uh, is is said he's looking for apartment, house, uh, cottage, tent, uh, back of someone's van, a- anything to uh, at this point to to get get local and get adjusted. So pray that uh, something opens up. But that is a uh, we're excited for him and his future. Pray for wisdom there. Who else tonight? A new prayer request or something we can update or add to our list uh, as we we prepare for prayer this evening, Miss Jill. Yes. Um, two people did accept Christ very greatly at their marriage. Yeah. Yeah. I think your husband shared that on Sunday. And uh, that is uh, a testimony. Of course, uh, tough to have a memorial, a funeral, to say goodbye. But I think all of us would say there's, if, if we were the one in the casket, uh, we would want our life and our testimony, even in death to be able to give the gospel and for people to be saved. And we rejoice in that to hear uh, the update. Also, it's been two years since his dad passed away from COVID. So okay. Pray for two years coming up on uh, the 15th. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and it's amazing how quick the time goes, and yet at the same time it also feels like uh, it was just yesterday. Just, uh, you know, that you're together and family. So pray for, uh, pray for Brother John and thinking about his dad and the, the anniversary of his passing. Ms. Carolyn? We have many prayers coming through. Yes. Um, the little baby girl that I've been working with since she was about two years old, um, graduated from therapy because she was not able to do it in her brain when she was born. Very good. And uh, milestones to say uh, as a teacher or a trainer or a therapist or uh, sad to see them go, but blessing that it's working. And uh, we like to hear that good reports from work and people that you get to be with and relationships made. Good. Miss Kay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, after, was that two weeks ago, three weeks? Had, yeah, had the accident, and, and uh, but now back to school and doing well, and uh, just pray for his, his uh, uh, pain and bruising, but pray. Yeah. Praise the Lord for, for for healing and for uh, nothing more uh, serious coming from it. We're, we're... Yeah. <laughs> if someone's going to find a way to get hurt, it's going to be him. Yeah. All right. Somebody else, a prayer request or a testimony this evening? 
And these are good for us to keep uh, uh, these requests in our minds and hearts throughout the week and other things. Miss Joanne? Well, my daughter-in-law, Brenda, just became recovered of her heart. Okay. Okay. All right, let's pray for Brenda and her heart and issues she's been having. Uh, one other uh, prayer request, I didn't read a, a missionary letter here, but our, our missionary of the week we want to pray for, and, and uh, also, I guess, by way of, of announcement for our church, to try to keep praying, uh, pray for the Buckley family, our missionaries there um, in Taiwan. I just got uh, an email from their missions board, the, the agency that, that helps send them, and they're, they're sending church, and it uh, outlined um, some of the struggles that since they've come back to the field, of course, his health has been very, very poor. Um, there was a period where they were considering not even returning uh, after being stateside for so long, and uh, the latest uh, update says between the, the Buckleys and the, the Sending Church and Mission Agency, they've made the decision to return from the field uh, due to poor health, and uh, that'll be coming here very shortly as far as the Buckleys coming back, and they'll be uh, transitioning into different ministries stateside and things with their local church and so forth. So they will um, be stepping out of full-time missions, and that's not a, a failure in term of you know, they can't, uh, they're, they're still valuable, still serving the Lord. Um, but as far as, as uh, a supported missionary, uh, foreign missionary, that'll be, that'll be ending. And uh, we as a church will continue to help them through the transition. But uh, into the new year and so forth, um, they won't be receiving support and so forth. So pray for them. I know they've got uh, some plans once they get back. And uh, without all the specific details, I haven't talked to them personally, but I do want uh, to let us know as a church to pray for them, pray for their, their return, <coughs> and that God acclimate them, pray for the ministry that they were able to start there. I believe by God's grace, it will continue to move forward, and they've got uh, some folks in place to um, try to work with the, the folks that they've, they've already reached and some local churches that they've partnered with. But uh, over the next, it says for the next uh, uh, two or three months of this kind of transition, getting back and all, uh, just pray for his health. And that's our update for our missions. So let's take a few minutes tonight. We'll, we'll pray together. And then I'll come back and close us in prayer. And we'll get ready for our Bible study and lesson together. But look around here. Find somebody to pray with. Groups two, three, four. And let's pray together as a church and then, uh, then prepare for our Bible study.
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you now for uh, giving us an opportunity to pray together. And Lord, may we never uh, forsake the, the time to draw close to you, to bow our knee. Lord, to lift our voice and our hearts in prayer, to pause for a moment in our day and, and reflect on both your goodness and the great need we have of you. Lord, the many things that have been mentioned tonight by physical needs and, and those that we're praying for and, and their, their body and their strength and health. For those who need to be saved, Lord, I pray that you would open their, their heart to you and may your spirit convict them in a special way. We pray for those in our church who are traveling, those who are coming in. We pray about Brady and, Lord, his opportunity now to take a new job and to move. And, Lord, as you're you know, growing him and his life, I pray that you'd uh, just provide for his needs and, and uh, give great wisdom. And I see he's looking for, for housing and transition. We're praying for, Lord, the days to come here in this fall season that you would use our church. Lord, my prayer is that you keep your hands upon us as the potter molds the clay. May we be sensitive and softened to you. And uh, Lord, may you just have your way in our lives. If there's something you want to change or something you want to move, something you want to add, oh, we're willing. We're just asking that you would please uh, use us. And uh, Lord, shape us to be pleasing in your eyes. Help us tonight to receive wisdom and instruction. I pray there be a profitable time together. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, this evening we are finished in Proverbs from chapter 21 where we've been. And, and uh, of course, we've taken uh, some times as we finish a chapter, the last couple of them, we've come to the week. We call it, You Asked For It. As far as a Wednesday Bible study and opportunity with some questions have been submitted. And I'm excited for tonight. I, I was given two cards, uh, one that had one single word on it, um, and then uh, another card that had a verse on it. And uh, I, we're, we're going to try to take those questions in stride. And then I've got one at the end, should we have time, that I'm calling unsolicited advice. In other words, it wasn't asked, but uh, I asked it for us. So it's, it's in our, our lesson this evening as well. But uh, tonight, let's start, if you would, go with me to James chapter 1 and verse number 19. Here's what was written on the card and handed to me, and it was this verse from James 1, 19. The question says, quick to listen and slow to speak, slow to wrath. Well, that's found here in James 1, 19. Let's Look at the verses, both 19 and verse 20. See what the Bible says. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. I hope to answer this. Perhaps I don't know who submitted the card, but uh, if, I, if I don't answer what the intended question was, uh, feel free to throw something at me or... Um, maybe a follow-up afterward would be fine, but uh, if my, my understanding is maybe an explanation for the verse or to comment on the verse, so we'll do our best uh, this evening to, to look at it. The, the Bible is, is given instruction here as James uh, pens the words, inspired by the Holy Ghost, and gives three commands there in verse 19. He says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Now, I love this because it dovetails so well with the things we've seen in the book of Proverbs in our normal Wednesday study. Swift to hear. God wants us ready to hear things. Quick to hear. Um, I think it was just last week, maybe the week before, we saw in our, our, our notes from Proverbs 21, and the comment was made, God gave us two ears, one mouth. He wants us to listen. He wants us ready to receive, and, and we, we need to be quick to hear instruction. It's Proverbs 4 that says, Hear ye children the instruction of a father. Many times the Bible uses the words hear, hear, listen. In fact, more times it says hear than it says speak. And uh, this is something we, we need to apply to be quick to hear instruction, quick to hear wisdom. The word swift here in the book of James, swift to hear, means I'm, I'm, I'm not just um, quick, but ready in, a, in a, a set position. If you and I were going to run a race, 
Um, and, and it was the type of race that's a sprint, you know, the 100 yard dash or something. I'm not a runner um, or, or a professional uh, track star by any means, but I've seen it, you have too, where they, they line up on the, the track and they will say something like, on your mark, get set, go. At least that's how we did it in third grade. I'm guessing it's how they do it in the Olympics. Um, but on that track, the, the runners get on their mark, they, they get set, they get in the stance, you know, down on, on, on uh, hunched forward and, and uh, one leg and, and the back one on the block. And they're, they're, that's swift to here. It's, it's the idea of saying, I am engaged to here, so I don't miss it. When truth is spoken, I'm ready to receive it. Uh, the Bible says that we ought to receive the instruction. We ought to be ready for truth. We're to hear the Spirit of God and the Scriptures of God. And these are things we ought to listen to regularly. Uh, ask yourself this internally. When's the last time you listened or heard from the Spirit of God? Because I, I believe, according to the Scripture and, and in, in, in experience, I believe the Spirit speaks often. The problem isn't his lack of speaking, it's our lack of listening. It should not be for a Christian that we say, well, I go week to week, you know, I'll, I'll hear something spiritual on a Sunday, and that's, then I'll go till next Sunday. Now you're here on a Wednesday. Well, yeah, I go Sunday to Wednesday to Sunday. We need a lot more than that in our, our Christian lives. We need to hear the Spirit of God literally leading and, and directing. We need to hear from the Scripture. If I went around the room tonight and asked every person plainly, what's the last thing you learned from your Bible? What's the last thing God talked to you about? It, it may be something that you read. It may be something uh, that, that you studied. It might be something that, that God revealed to you. But I, I, hope, I hope we don't go, again, Sunday to Sunday before I get something out of my Bible. It ought to be that on a daily basis, a regular basis, God is speaking to us, and we're quick to hear it. Um, I think it was Brother Neil, maybe a week or two ago, uh, was, was talking, and, and uh, he, he made mention of, of writing things down on, on a, a basis of your walk with God and, and things that he would maybe read or, or something that God would speak or something to learn. And uh, these are good practices for us to say, if God speaks, I'm listening. I'm listening. So as the verse tells us, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Then the second command, slow to speak. Slow to speak. So just as much as I'm ready to listen, to hear, I'm ready to be slow to speak. That doesn't maybe sound natural to say, but just as much as we're ready to listen, we need to be ready to not speak. The natural inclination, I think, that we find is that our mouth will engage before we're ready. We're good at reacting. We're good at... Um, we're, we're, our culture just conditions us. We have to have a response right away for everything. We, uh, the, the people in the news, that's what they live for. The, the commentators and, and uh, news anchors and social media folks, they, they have to react instantly. You know, if there's a, a, a political speech that takes place, used to be that, you know, they, they listen to the speech and, and figure it out, take notes, and then the next day produce a column, you know, it was written about in the newspaper. No, now it's live in the moment. People are responding before the, the speech is even finished. It's, you know, here's what I think, and here's what he missed, and here's what he said right, and, here, and, and we're so quick to react to everything. And God is reminding us, consider some things before you speak. I like this phrase, say it out loud before you say it out loud. In other words, have you ever caught yourself well, I wouldn't have said that if I actually heard how it sounded. 
Say it to yourself. Maybe bounce it off a trusted friend. Maybe take it to the family before we put it public. We ought to be slow and consider not just what we're saying, but consider the audience. Sometimes I have the right thing to say, but the wrong people to say it to. Consider the audience. We ought to consider the timing. Again, sometimes it might be the right thing to say, just the wrong time. Every situation requires a little bit of wisdom to say, is this the time to say it? There have been multiple occasions, even as a, a, a preacher, I'll, I want to say certain things. Maybe an address to the church or, or, or something in a message or something in an announcement. And I consider, and Lord, is, this, is it the time for it? I'm not perfect in this. But I do want to make sure things that are said are said to the right people, the right timing. Then we need to consider, consider our own spirit and how it's said. Could be the right time, right people, but if I'm not in the right spirit, I shouldn't say it. You ever said something of truth, something that needs to be said, something to the right person, right time, but you just did it with the wrong attitude, maybe in anger, maybe in, in a snide remark, maybe it was on purpose trying to, to, you know, fire back at somebody. Check the spirit. Slow to speak. Remember this, words... <laughs> cannot be retracted. They say you can't put toothpaste back in the tube. You can't put the words back in the mouth. Once they're out, they're out. And uh, even in our digital world, now we can delete text messages or you know retract an email. You, you can't do that with words. The moment they're out, they're out. And they're there forever. And then we find the command... Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Wrath is an interesting subject in the Bible. Wrath is a godly attribute in the fact we find God is a God of wrath. But this is also an attribute you and I are not supposed to possess. Wrath is reserved for God, much like revenge. Vengeance is reserved for God, not for us. Some characteristics of the Lord we're called to emulate. Be holy, for I am holy. We should love as God loves. But while God can have perfect righteous wrath, you and I, in our human state, cannot. In fact, we're called to the opposite. We're called to peace. What makes God so unique is he's 100% perfect peace and 100% perfect wrath. We fail we, we can't have both, so God says you, people, Christians, live at peace with each other. Take the high road is the, the term we, we use. We're not called to wrath, but to peace. Wrath is a violence that's attached to anger. Again, we find where God in his perfect nature can, can, can judge out violence and do it properly. And we use that term violence in the fact where God can destroy a city or, or wipe out a people or judge with pestilence or famine or how God, but that's not for you and I to decide. Sometimes Christians get on their high horse and say, well, I, I really let that person have it with righteous indignation. I know I was right with God in, in, in getting mad. God says be slow to wrath. Don't, don't let this become a natural reaction. In fact, the this next verse in, in James, verse number 20, says, For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Man's wrath never brings good results. My wrath, my, my, my violence because of anger never does God's business. It's always a work of the flesh. So here's the verse that we've seen and try to, try to look at being uh, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Here's the next card that was given. Again, just one word on it, and uh, we'll try to answer it the best I can. The word was music. Music. <laughs> uh, so again, if, if 
you wrote this and said, well, that didn't answer my question. Perhaps uh, give me a follow-up or something to go with it. This is a huge topic and one we could probably spend three or four weeks of a series on just music. So I'll give you a few thoughts and, and a lot of scripture won't have you turn to all these verses, but Psalm 40, verse number one, the Bible says, I waited patiently for the Lord and inclined, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me also uh, up out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Verse 3 says, And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even a song, or even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. God has given music. Here the psalmist writes, He hath put a new song in my mouth. Now it's a song of praise. It's a good thing. Notice music, in this context, God gave it, but music also exists before God gave it. You can't have a new song if there wasn't an old song. In the heart of every person is a song. Now, whether you're musically inclined, as gifted as I am, of course, vocally, or, 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 or whether you sing or not uh, professionally, God's given you a song. It's in your heart. It, it's so fascinating to watch even young children who can't even walk and talk yet when certain music plays. Watch what they do. Yeah. And, and, and the, the, the kids' shows and the cartoons know how to get the right music to get. We play lullabies to make a child go to sleep. We play certain upbeat music to make them want to, to get up and move. Music speaks a language that is universal. And it doesn't speak just to the ear. It speaks to the soul. It speaks to the emotions. It speaks to the mind. It's powerful. And God said he wants to use it as a new song. In Ephesians 5, verse 19, the Bible says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. This is how God wants music to be used. He says, speaking to yourselves in psalms. That's, of course, the Old Testament songbook that the Jews use. The psalms, hymns. That's the, the songs to and about the Lord. Uh, in spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart. It ought to be in your heart. Then the psalms tell us, make a joyful noise. It ought to go from the heart to the mouth. I've got uh, three or four things I'll give you on what I, I, I label as music fallacies. These are, I think, worth pointing out. Sometimes we get the wrong idea of music, even as Christians. So these are some things I call fallacies. In other words, these are, are, are not true. Sometimes Christians go, go to 10 different churches you'll find 10 different thoughts and positions on music. It's just one of these areas that people chase down to, to all degrees. God's given us some principles, but man wants to, wants to nail things down where God doesn't always nail them down. Understand that sometimes we can be outside of the will of God on either side of the ditch, if that makes sense. We, we can go into a wrong direction that God says this isn't good, and we can also go too far this way to say, well, my music is more right than yours. When, when God said it's, 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 you know, you're okay, you're not out of bounds. So here's some fallacies. One, and this is something I've heard preached from various uh, uh, places. Perhaps you've heard this, but... I would say it's a fallacy, and the school of thought says that vocal music is the only valid music to worship God. I heard a preacher recently, and he said, well, yeah, you don't want to go to one of these churches that has all those instruments. You can't hear the people singing. The human voice is the only instrument that God ever intended. It's an interesting thought. Not against vocal music. We sing every week in church. The problem is it's not what the Bible tells us. See, the Bible says, praise ye the Lord with harp, 
sing, that's with the voice, unto him with the psaltery, that's another instrument, an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. Psalm 33, verses 2 and 3. I could show you ten other verses from various places that instruct skillful music. And, and uh, we know David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, not only did he sing vocally and write music, but he played, played that harp. So don't, 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 don't think that the only way to please the Lord is with the voice. Music goes beyond that. Don't neglect the voice. Here's another fallacy. This makes its way into some church circles. Old hymns are the only songs that can be used to worship God. I'm glad a couple weeks ago we sang, in fact, one of the oldest hymns in the the. the, the Still around today, from the 1500s, Martin Luther wrote the song, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. I love it. It's a great song. But we can also recognize there are plenty of songs that have been written in the 2000s that are still good to sing. Uh, understand, we don't neglect the old hymns. There's a lot of good ones. But unlike scripture, music changes. We would say that the old book's the only one we need, and that's true. We don't rewrite the Bible. But there's nothing wrong with an updated song list or a new song or a, uh, a, a, a song that's written, we, we would say, in our generation, in our era. Um, again, the Bible says in Psalm 96, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. The only, uh, here, here's another fallacy, the only valid Music for a Christian is, quote, church music. I've heard uh, some try to take, adopt the school. That, well, if, if, it's not, if it's not in the hymn book, Christians should never sing it, listen to it, or partake of it. I'll just use some real small examples, and you can take it for what it's worth. Last I looked, Mary Had a Little Lamb's not in the, not in the song book. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Those are some of the first songs I ever learned. I don't know about you. Now, maybe, maybe, maybe we're wicked and, and, and heathen for singing those with our kids. Um, Old MacDonald had a farm. Now, that one, that, that, that should be in our songbook, I think. Um, now, you have to figure out where the Spirit gives liberty. But understand that just because it's not, quote, a church song doesn't make it a bad song. Now, can I... Can I broaden that a little bit and say that there are songs I believe that should be reserved for church in other words <laughs> there's actually a reason we're not singing old MacDonald had a farm instead of isn't he wonderful 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 nothing wrong with old MacDonald it does, doesn't have a place in the church go out to the the Cubs game and uh seventh inning what are we going to sing take me out to the ball but uh Sunday night we're going to have an invitation at church. We're, we're not singing that. It doesn't mean it's a bad song. It just doesn't fit in the context. Likewise, you go out to the, the baseball game. You know what we're not singing? Amazing grace. It's a good song. It just doesn't fit. So understand that, that don't, don't buy into the idea the only music available has to be, quote, church music. All right, one more fallacy here. Um, only music by Christian artists is appropriate for believers. This would be, um, you know, if, if it wasn't written by a, uh, a born-again believer who loves the Lord, then it must not be good. I think we, could, we can understand that, one, God uses the weak things of the world to confound the wise. God doesn't, um, God's not limited to the where things come from. Um, we could apply that perhaps to a lot of things. Let me ask um, the contractor that built your house, were they saved? Did they love the Lord? I don't know, I just bought the house. The house worked for you? Yeah, it works. It's okay to live there. Um, the, the, the car you drive, you know, the assembly line, was every person that, that put the rivets in and the welds in, painted the car, were they 
doing it for the honor and glory of God, or we still, still drive the car. When it comes to the how things originate, I understand that there are some, no doubt, um, musical artists and people who have put music together that have no place in, in the Christian life. Not because of where it came from, but why it was put together. Uh, we're, we're not taking the songs that were put together for the rock concert to come into the church. But plenty of people who have been used of God to give good music. Amazing Grace, we just mentioned that song. While the man gloriously got saved, his life prior to that was a pretty wicked life. John Newton, out selling slaves and, and bringing together um, a, a, a heathen life and, and uh, injurious by his own account. There's other times where someone who loves the Lord, does right, writes a song, does may, maybe puts some music to it, and uh, then later in life turns out uh, backslidden, running away from God, uh, living a wicked life. It doesn't mean that song now we have to throw out. Understand there's a, there's a separation between music and composer. You follow the, the, the line there. Um, I think we'll, we'll get to just a few more things. I, I probably won't get to my unsolicited advice tonight, but let me give a, a few um, other thoughts on music. As we've already said, music's a language. It communicates directly to the soul, and it does it not with just the words, but with the the, uh, the, the, the tempo, the beat of the music, the uh, melody, the harmonies, the, the music itself. So here's the question to ask. Since it's communicating, the question to determine what makes music good, bad, indifferent is what's being communicated. Since music communicates, ask yourself what's being communicated. Is it praise to the Lord? Is it attention for self? Is it an imitation of the world? Or is it, by definition, the term holy, meaning set apart, it's sacred? Um, plenty of songs that we could perhaps consider that aren't by nature giving God glory, so maybe they don't belong in church, but again, Mary had a little lamb or old McDonald, twinkle, twinkle, and a whole lot of other, the ABCs, um, I think that's their song. Uh, do they, are they still okay to sing? Well, they have a place, what's being communicated? Is it, is there something in, in, the, in the message that would be against scripture? I don't know all the popular artists and songs and lyrics of today but I know that a lot of them communicate messages that would be anti-God pro-immorality vulgar language um, things that would be carnal in nature so what's being communicated then we, uh, we, we say this, all music should honor the Lord. All music should honor him. In other words, nothing should take away from God. Some music is sung to the Lord. Some is sung about the Lord. And this is, this is referring specifically to worship music, to church music. Um, maybe... Maybe we could have put this into the controversy of the fallacies. I've heard some try to argue, you know, when we're in church, the only thing that we should be singing is to the Lord. Now, it is true. We're supposed to sing to God. But not all music is sung to him. Some is sung about him as a testimony. Read through the Psalms and read how David and, and Moses and others who wrote about the things God did. It wasn't necessarily to him. There's a separation, some music sung to him, how great thou art, how great thou art. Some music is about him. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful? Uh, we, we recognize this, that going into to church music for a moment, public music 
should be pleasing to the crowd, but presented for the Lord. Pleasing to the crowd, presented for the Lord. Um, I don't remember where we were. Someone was arguing the fact that, well, you know, you come into church, we shouldn't have people practicing for music. That just becomes a performance. <laughs> Truth is, if we don't practice, what's it going to sound like? Maybe, maybe it can be sung to the Lord, but in a public setting, we're singing for the Lord, but in front of people. You got up this morning, you came to church tonight, and every person here prepared themselves to be seen in public, the way that we dress, the way that we, we get ready. But we're also preparing ourselves to come into the house of the Lord. There's, there's opportunity to prepare for both. We're appropriate publicly, knowing that the greater need is to present ourselves to the Lord personally. In other words, when we, we sing in church, it ought to be pleasing to people, but it's presented for the Lord. Nothing wrong with having it practiced or rehearsed. There is something wrong with a performance for man. And uh, much we could say on music. I'm going to stop it there. I'll show you. Um, no, I won't. I'm going to save this. And uh, maybe, maybe we'll save it for next week. And if another question or two comes in, uh, we'll, we'll come to that next week. If not, I'll give you uh, one more, again, I call unsolicited advice. It's my own question. But uh, we'll put that in and then prepare for Proverbs 22. But uh, hopefully we can answer the, the two that were submitted tonight. Let me pray, and uh, we'll get ready to dismiss and prepare ourselves for a great week uh, to come. Our Father, we thank you now for the things that you've, you've given us tonight from your word as we consider the verse in James about being uh, swift to hear, and slow to speak, slow to wrath. Lord, help us to be considerate of that in our, our lives in the days ahead. And then as we think about the subject of music, I pray that we would honor you with our music, the things both that we would... Uh, take in and put out. Lord, I'm thankful that you've given each of us a song in our heart. I pray that we would let that song be honoring to you and pleasing to men. And Father, help us now to uh, be wise concerning the things we've heard. Dismiss us with your favor and blessing upon us. Keep us safe and guard us this week, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's uh, dismiss this evening. If there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. Have a great week. It's hard.